All right, y'all. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're tuning in. I'm grateful to have you here, and we're changing it up today. We're going to do a little ride along with police in Queens, a borough of New York City, as they do what could be the largest takedown in that area's entire history. So I'm sure this is going to be a doozy. I'm sure I'll also go on a long rant and have lots of thoughts and perspective to add to this. So stay tuned for that at the end. Let's get it popping. Officials think this could be the largest gang takedown in history in the borough of Queens, and Fox 5 was given exclusive access as it happened. The Queens District Attorney, along with the NYPD Chief of Detectives, announcing the 151-count indictment of 33 alleged gang members. Officials say all 33 defendants are charged with conspiracy to commit murder and that 18 of those were active trigger pullers. They say the defendants are members of warring gangs, trying to establish territorial dominance in Southeast Queens. The gun violence escalated after the high-profile murder of an aspiring high school basketball star four years ago. While the gang war was set off by a slashing in April of 2019, the tensions and the violence between the warring factions escalated after the murder of 14-year-old Amir Griffin in October of 2019. Throughout this investigation, it was determined that members of these gangs intended to commit murder and shoot opposing gang members based solely on their alliances and territorial disputes. 30 guns. You see them there. They were seized in this gang takedown. But before today's sweeping indictment was announced against members of two violent street gangs, our own Lisa Evers was embedded with the operation as NYPD detectives rounded up the suspects. And she is here now to bring us this Fox 5 exclusive. Lisa, take it away. Well, Chris, this long-term investigation began with the murder of a promising teen basketball player. Now, nearly four years later, NYPD detectives tell us they have dismantled two rival gangs who terrorized South Jamaica residents with reckless gun fire using drill music videos and social media to fuel their beefs. We got an exclusive look at their focus methods, which are very different from the wide net gang sweeps of the past. Some of the more than 30 suspects were already behind bars in state prison and on Rikers Island for other crimes. They were brought into the 111th precinct to be charged in this major gang conspiracy case. So serious were the safety concerns about the explosive rivalry between the crews known as Money World and their opposition or ops, the local trap stars, that police booked them at separate precincts to keep their family members and associates separated when they showed up. It's pretty much shoot on sight when they see the opposition. Um, and a lot of times innocent people are caught in, in the middle of it. Over the last five or six years, these two gangs uh, terrorized an entire community. Before sunrise, more than 100 and 50 NYPD detectives and supervisors assembled for the takedown of the alleged gang members. Most are between the ages of 18 to 22 and have been arrested before. This started in uh, the Baisley houses when Amira Griffin got uh, uh, shot and killed. In October 2019, 14-year-old Amir Griffin, a Cardozo High School student athlete, was the unintended target of a shooting. He was killed on the basketball courts near his home. John, anything you want to say? 18-year-old Sean Brown was arrested for the murder and is part of this case. That could have been me. It could be my cousins, my nephews. I mean, it's just sad that that had to happen, but Today, we, we, we have justice for the family. As detectives investigated, they found a connection to other shootings that were happening in South Jamaica. Some were in broad daylight, one even outside a high school. Police say an escalating rivalry between the money world and local trap star gangs was responsible. Once a shooting occurs and there's retaliation for that shooting, it goes back and forth. And uh, it seems like they're never satisfied with the amount of violence they've committed, and they're always trying to get one up on their opposition. Captain Gillis says the rivalry is over territory not money or drugs. The hatred heated up over social media taunts and drill music videos where they allegedly bragged about the shootings, the actual locations, and even the calibers of guns used in incidents under investigation. The drill rap is always a motivator, right? And the drill rap is so specific in that they mention people uh, that have been killed in the past and disrespect those people that have been killed in the past, and it creates a residual effect where it's a tit-for-tat, a one-for-one. Everyone's trying to get one up on the scoreboard. 
that creates a retaliatory effect on both sides. Chief, you have a lot of members of the NYPD here. Who is here and involved in this operation? Yeah, so this, uh, this operation involves uh, members of the Detective Bureau. In particular, there's two different units. It's called Queen South uh, VCS. In addition to that, it's a gun violence suppression unit. What's happening here right now is you see different groups getting together. They're getting their assignments and they're also getting their orders from their superiors about how they're going to do this raid, how they're going to take these suspects in. Detectives from local precincts as well as warrants, homicide and narcotics units provided backup and were involved in the tactical attack meeting to review strategy. Most of you guys know uh, which your position is going to be on the team. We're going to move in it tactically. Uh, we're going to take our time when we get into the location, uh, make sure we communicate. Before we go out, they ask me and my cameraman to take precautions too. So they're giving us bulletproof vests because uh, many of the suspects that they're going after today have been pre-indicted on very serious gun charges. Some are actually accused of murder. We head out onto the highway towards South Jamaica. We're part of an NYPD caravan right now going to the various locations where detectives will be apprehending the suspects in this case. Rejoice. We arrive at the house. The detectives surround it according to plan, while others do a door knock and go in with a warrant for the suspect. The detectives were able to find the person that they were looking for. They have taken this suspect in custody. They were in the house. They came out. No shots have been fired. This Good. suspect, who was wanted for murder, is brought in to be booked. Another team returns with a suspect who wasn't part of the original case. Police say he panicked and threw this gun out the window while the officers were looking for someone else. Get that f that sh my f face, my the NYPD says this case, like others in recent years, shows that when they do sharply focused investigations and take the most violent offenders off the streets, the surrounding communities experience a drop in gun violence. These guys did horrific God. violence out in uh, the streets of South Jamaica. So it's a victory for the community today that these guys are actually all apprehended. Countless acts, several homicides, non-fatal shootings, incidents of gunfire throughout the community absolutely took its toll. And I'm happy that we were able to deliver a clear message today that that won't be tolerated. Of course, all of the suspects are presumed innocent until proven guilty, but the NYPD of says course. they have more than enough evidence to support the charges so that they will not be able to shoot anyone again for a very long time. God bless and thank you to the NYPD for doing this. This should happen in all cities across the United States, but I know this is a prominent area for gang violence and crime and shootings as it should be done in, in these areas first, Chicago, Southside, all of those areas. This has to be taken seriously and what i despise and what i absolutely can't stand is how in the world we're living in the first thing people shout and cry that the, the problem is in the, in this society that we're living in is uh racism oh racism is horrible like white people hate black people white people holding black people down no 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 it's not a racism problem anymore this isn't the 1860s this isn't the 1960s if you live in the great usa the united states of america it used to be together you know the home of the free because of the brave men and women who have sacrificed their lives and and everything that we take for granted they've gone out there voluntarily to fight for these rights that we just piss away that we just just throw in the wind and it all boils down to the way you choose to live and the decisions that you make society as a whole we all have to do better it's not just one specific community not just black not just white not yellow asian any of that stuff if society as a whole decided it didn't want things like this to happen anymore it would stop or we would at least see a dramatic decrease in 18 to 22 year olds getting locked up innocent 14 year olds and kids younger than that getting shot people just being harmed for no reason it boils down to hate. People have a hate and heart of evil problem. They lack a relationship with the Lord. They lack knowing the knowledge of Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross when he sacrificed himself perfectly innocent, didn't have to whatsoever. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, but these kids don't know that. They don't know that he already took on all the sin in the world, all the evil, all the unjust, all the, the wicked things and situations that you think you've been tossed into, even though it comes down to the choices that you make. Jesus Christ paid that debt, but you have to look to him. You have to repent from your wicked ways. I know kids don't always have a father and a mother in the home, which is sad. They don't have a two-parent household that's married. They, they, you know, parents promoting gang violence and drugs and sex and alcohol and all these evil things that, you know, consume the minds of these young children. They don't know anything other than what they have seen growing up. But at some point, God is going to give you a choice. You can either choose the righteous path, the, the narrow gate that leads to heaven. You can repent and, you know, 
throw all of the things that you've done behind you. It, you can change forever. Die to your old self. Pick up your cross. Repent. Be forgiven. Confess Christ as Lord and Savior. Get baptized. Wash that away and start a new chapter in your life. Start a new path. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. You can lay it all down because Jesus Christ forgives all all of us for our sins when we're willing to look to him. Doesn't matter what you've done in the past. I promise you that. I, I used to live in darkness. I wasn't in gangs or anything like that, but I've had my own battles with addictions, with women, with lust, with porn, with lying, with, with all sorts of stuff. We all got our own baggage that we carry in, in, on our shoulders, but you can let that go. You can lean on the Lord. It's just insane to me that people feel that they're entitled to, to, to own these streets and these areas and these territories. No, no, no. That's a public right of way. Those are other people's neighborhoods just as much as yours. That, if anything, those are God's created places. So treat them with respect. Treat others with respect. Love your neighbor as yourself. It doesn't matter if they're from the, the, a different block. It doesn't matter if they have something that you don't got. We should love all people. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what level of melanin or pigmentation that you got, how, how tan you are or lack thereof. I don't care if you're pasty white. I got black in me. It, it's irrelevant. I didn't. I chose to take a different route. I, I, I grew up on the west side of town. Now, I wasn't living in Queens. I wasn't living in the south side of Chicago. I'm a couple hours away from Chicago, but there's bad areas and, and roughnecks and, and, you know, go-getters and, and all of that. Go-getters in the bad sense of the word in all areas across the world, not just in the United States, but you can always choose to do something different. You can always choose to go against the grain and not do what everybody else is doing. Not let yourself succumb to these wicked ways of living, hostile anger, aggression, and violence. You don't have to do this. I'm telling you, I'm praying for you. I love you. Put this stuff down. But in the meantime, we have to keep locking criminals up. We have to keep doing what's right for the safety of the community and just pray that these people wake up. Stop encouraging this culture with music and celebrating these, these famous artists that have shot somebody or that have dealt drugs or that have uh, degraded women in their lyrics and their actual everyday actions in the real world. In reality, this lifestyle, it, it can't be encouraged and, and subsidized like it's been for decades while hard work and discipline and responsible decision-making, good parenting, a unity, a covenant of marriage, etc. that's been punished. No, no, no. It needs to be in the reverse. Good or even Evil is not good and good is good. This ain't, this shouldn't be celebrated. This shouldn't be tolerated. This shouldn't be uplifted, put on a pedestal as the, the way to live, the, the virtuous activities and things to engage in to get you anywhere other than hell because you got exactly what's coming to you and you deserve all the detrimental aftermath and repercussions for pursuing in a lifestyle like this. I understand when you're young, that's all you know, but at some point you're not young anymore. You become an adult and you got to have big boy, big girl, adult conversations and responsibility and accountability and look in the mirror. Nobody else is to blame for you getting locked up. Nobody else is, is to blame for you shooting somebody, manually pulling that trigger, going out, stealing that gun, getting those drugs, slanging, whatever it is. This is not righteousness. This is sin. It has to stop. I, I can't say that and reiterate it enough, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this up with some biblical soul food, and it's a long one, but one of my all-time favorites from Scripture because, again, this is what changed the changes the complete landscape. This is what shifts the narrative from racism and, and woke agendas to responsibility, accountability, and the path out of this, the gateway to heaven. So I'm going to share it with you. It's Romans 1, verse 16 through 32. Follow along. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes first to the Jew and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. For God's wrath is revealed from heaven against all godlessness and unrighteousness of people who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Since what can be known about God is evident among them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, that is, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen since the creation of the world, being understood through what he has made. As a result, people are without excuse. For though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or show gratitude. Instead, their thinking became worthless and their senseless hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man, birds, four-footed animals, and reptiles. Therefore, God delivered them over in their desires of their hearts to sexual impurity so that their bodies were degraded among themselves. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served what has been created instead of the creator who is praised forever. Amen.
For this reason, God delivered them over to their disgraceful passions. Their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. The men, in the same way, also left natural relations with women and were inflamed in their lust for one another. Men committed shameless acts with men and received in their own persons the appropriate penalty of their error. And because they did not think it worthwhile to acknowledge God, God delivered them over to a corrupt mind so that they do what is not right. They are filled with all unrighteousness, evil, greed, and wickedness. They are full of envy, murder, quarrels, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, arrogant, proud, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, senseless, untrustworthy, unloving, and unmerciful. Although they know God's just sentence that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but even applaud others who practice them. No more. You know what the punishment is, so it comes down to you and your decisions and your choices and where you put your time and energy and effort. No matter what age you are, when you get to 18, you are a grown man. And I think even before that, you consciously can make decisions that guide you to a better future, that guide you to righteousness, that uplifts the community, that doesn't tear down and murder and bash and belittle and live in this wicked, idolatrous sin. Stop uplifting these people that are winning Oscars and Grammys and start uplifting the Lord. Start uplifting the Savior. Start leaning on him and planting yourself by the flowing water that li- that leads to eternal life. This, not acceptable. This, not an excuse anymore. Racism, not the problem. Look in the mirror. If you're engaging in this, you deserve what's coming to you unless you repent and choose to pursue a different lifestyle. Choose to pursue Christ, the one who saves, the life giver, the alpha, the omega. I'll pray for you. I love you. I want the best for you. That's why I judge righteously and call out sin when I see it because I'm trying to guide as many people to the kingdom and make as many disciples as I possibly can. That's what I've been put on here on earth to do. And I pray that the Lord continues to bless me with wisdom and a voice and a platform to share the gospel. These people need to be shown the gospel in jail. They need to be put through some ringers and some trials and some tribulations to where they have no other choice but to choose God. If society did that, we would be a whole lot better off. But what do y'all think? Let me know down below in the comments section. Let's keep this conversation rolling. Don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring that notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a video. And, you know, feel free to share this video as always. The the algorithm is always working against Christian values. So definitely get this out in front of the public so they can see what real truth looks like, not just this perceived fake of this world truth. But outside of that, if you want to support the channel, you like what I'm doing over here, you can always get awesome designs like this. Isaiah 4110, made by my lovely wife over on her Etsy store. She also has insulated tumblers like this, this Soldiers of America one right here. Many other Christian American designs, petite, teat, small designs to big, big and hefty 5Xs. We got everything you would like over there uh, linked in the description section down below. Big thank you to my Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee members. Y'all know I love you. You putting your hard earned money behind me. I am forever grateful. I can't even put it into words how much you guys mean to me and just allowing me to monetarily support my family when YouTube made demonetized videos or or whatever it may be. But if YouTube takes us now, I'll be over on Rumble. So make sure you're following me over there as well. But until next time, I love you. Godspeed. I'm gone.